Welcome back to Read This Next with Laura and Nicole. This week we are doing alien invasions. We've done space before, but we are specifying now more on Earth. Yeah, yeah. So these are all, um, it's kind of, we've tried to have a real mix. So there's ones that are like uh, kind of unnerving space invasions. And then there's ones that are more playful. Let's have a fun time space invasions. Yeah, it's good. It's, I mean, as per <laughs> usual, we have a wide variety. <laughs> we do. Yes, we've got ones that are more literary. We've got one that is, <laughs> the blurb says it's like space balls. So <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's, yes, it's a silly one. But yeah, so lots, lots to choose from. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to get started with the first one. Um, our list is good today. So the first one is Armada by Ernest Klein. So here's the description. I do like the cover. I like how simple it is. Yes, it's a good one. Um, okay, Zach Lightman has spent his life dreaming, dreaming that the real world would be that uh that the real world could be a little more like the countless science fiction books movies and video games he spent his life consuming dreaming that one day some fantastic world-altering event will shatter the monotony of his humdrum existence and whisk him off on some grand spacefaring adventure but hey there's nothing wrong with a little escapism right after all, Zach tells himself, he knows the difference between fantasy and reality. He knows that here in the real world, aimless teenage gamers with anger issues don't get chosen to save the universe. We'll see. Then he sees the flying saucer. Even stranger, the alien ship he's staring at is straight out of the video game he plays every night, a hugely popular online flight simu simulator called Armada, in which gamers just happen to be protecting the Earth from alien invaders. No, Zack hasn't lost his mind. As impossible as it seems, what he's seeing is all too real. And his skills, as well as those of millions of gamers across the world, are going to be needed to save the Earth from what's about to befall it. It's Zack's chance at last to play the hero, but even though the terror, even through the terror and exhilaration, he can't help thinking back to all those science fiction stories he grew up with and wondering, doesn't something about this scenario feel a little familiar? <laughs> the description for that book is really good. Like a lot of times we get kind of like super vague ones, yes. but this no is like talking. a summary and it's like, and now you're going to want more. <laughs> That's by, that is the author of Ready Player One, which was a hugely popular book. And then Very a good. movie that was also a big smash. Mm -hmm. um, so if you enjoyed those, it does sound, it sounds a little simple, the plot, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, I suspect it's going to have a lot of gamer culture in it and sure. things like that, which are appealing. If you've re like Ready Player One is a pretty simple story overall, too. Yeah, but um, he's a he's a really good author. I, I really liked his Ready Player. Did you read? No, no. OK, the movie was decent. I'll say I it. Did, some people didn't like it, but I did I see it. the movie. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it was a movie. It was a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so go check that one out. <laughs> okay, our next one is very entirely different. So major uh, turn <laughs> in the style of book. Mm -hmm. um, Armada is, it's adult, right? Yeah. I think it's just, I think most you know, of the stuff is. Yeah, but would have teen appeal, obviously. Yeah. Um, this one is also from the adult collection. It is called The Seep by Chana Porter. Trina Goldberg Onike is a trans woman whose life is irreversibly altered in the wake of a gentle but nonetheless world changing invasion by an alien entity calling itself the Seep. Through the Seep, everything is connected. Capitalism falls, hierarchies and barriers are broken down. If something can be imagined, it is possible. Trina and her wife, Diva, live blissfully under the Seep's utopian influence until Diva begins to imagine what it might be like to be reborn as a baby, which okay. would give her a chance at an even better life. Using seep, seep tech to make this dream a reality, Diva moves on to a new existence, leaving Trina devastated. Heart, yeah, heartbroken. <laughs> okay. 
and deep in an alcoholic binge, Trina chases after a young boy she encounters, embarking on an unexpected quest. In her attempt to save him from the seep, she will confront not only one of its most avid devotee, devotees, <laughs> Uh, as always, I uh, have issues <laughs> while well reading. It's like the first couple of books I, I like mumble, I trip over stuff and then I get it together by the end and then we're done. I had to restart like four times. And then... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so she's going to save him and she must confront not only one of its most avid devotees, devotees, but the terrifying void that Diva has left behind. Wow. Sounds trippy, dramatic. The cover is weird and I like it. It's very like abstract. Wait, let me see. Let me see it. Yeah, it looks very artsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Into it. It sounds really cool. I'm interested. I like Alien Invasion. My rec is also very similar where like the Alien Invasion is just kind of chill. And it's an interesting concept because so so many times you'll see things that are like aggressive aliens and they're here to take over. But yeah. these ones are just like, hi, we can improve things for you. <laughs> of course. I mean, listening to reading the description, it does sort of sound like they're, they may have ulterior motives. Possibly. <laughs> just perhaps. Who knows? But uh, yeah. It turns yes. into a human zoo book. <laughs> You know what? It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> exactly. I've, I've read something that turns into human too. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Our next one is a old one. So this is The Kraken Wakes by John Windham. It was interesting. I had a hard time finding a description that was long. So this is not very long. Okay, it starts with fireballs raining down from the sky and crashing into the ocean's deep. Then ships begin sinking mysteriously, and later sea tanks emerge from the deeps. The deeps? The depths? I feel like should be the right word to claim people. For journalist Mike and Phyllis Watson, what at first appears to be a curiosity becomes a global calamity. Helpless, they watch as humanity struggles to survive. Now that water, one of the compounds upon which life depends, is turned against them. Finally, sea levels begin their inexorable rise. Um, The Kraken Wakes is a brilliant novel of how how humankind responds to the threat of its own extinction and ultimately asks what we are prepared to do in order to survive. Interesting. That's an alien attacks one. (laughs) Yes, it is. That author wrote i don't know if you read it in high school i certainly did the chrysalids did not i've heard a lot about it yeah yeah that's like a a kind of a classic dystopian sci-fi i guess i'm trying to just remember a few specific things i think it is dystopian um but yeah so if you've heard of the chrysalids because that one seems to be more well known this is another one of his that you could check out yeah it seems cool okay so my next one, actually, funnily enough, as soon as we said it, I was like, oh, this one is actually a little bit human zoo too, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Since, like not exactly, but like sort of. Um, so the book is called Landscape with Invisible Hand. It's by M.T. Anderson. And it is, it's really brief. It's like a novella almost. Okay. Yeah. So this is, I'm going to, the name of the aliens is V-U-V-V. Just going to say Vuv. All right. Yeah. When the Vub first landed, it came as a surprise to aspiring artist Adam and the rest of planet Earth, but not necessarily an unwelcome one. Can it really be called an invasion when the Vub generously offered free advanced technology and cures for every illness imaginable? As it turns out, yes. (laughs) 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 Not going to leave you hanging on that question. Yes, it is. Um, With his parents' jobs replaced by alien tech and no money for food, clean water, or the Vub's miraculous medicine, Adam and his girlfriend, Chloe, have to get creative to survive. And this is is the zoo-ish part. And since the Vub crave anything they deem classic earth culture, doo-wop music, still life paintings of fruit, true love, recording 1950s-style dates for the Vub to watch in a pay-per-minute format seems like a brilliant idea. But it's hard for Adam and Chloe to sell true love when they hate each other (laughs) more with every passing episode. (laughs) Soon Adam must decide how far he's willing to go and what he's willing to sacrifice to give the Vub what they want. Wow. It's like opposite fake dating. Yeah. They don't. They really don't like each other. (laughs) They don't like each other. But it's like, this is how we survive. So here we go. Make it happen, I guess. Make it happen. 
but yeah idea. i wonder what else everybody else is doing to make money it's uh and like i said it's a short it's a quick read yeah. um i i enjoyed it i read that one a while ago too like when it first came out so it's not very recent but um yeah it was a good one okay check it out uh okay our next one is adaptation by melinda lowe she writes something else and i cannot That's remember lots is she like Warbreaker and no that's marie lou oh um melinda no. lowe did um ash the the like rewritten lesbian cinderella not Love cinderella it. yeah um which is great and then um she's done she's done a bunch of other stuff this is actually a duology I okay believe. good mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. so this is adaptation um Okay, Reese can't remember anything from the time between the accident and the day she woke up almost a month later. She only knows one thing, she's different now. Across North America, flocks of birds hurl themselves into airplanes, causing at least a dozen to crash. Thousands of people die. Fearing terrorism, the United States government grounds all flights and millions of travelers are stranded. Reese and her debate team partner and longtime crush David are in Arizona when it happens. Everyone knows the world will never be the same. On their drive home to San Francisco along a stretch of empty highway at the night of the ooh, at night in the middle of Nevada, a bird flies into their headlights. The car flips over. That seems extreme. <laughs> it does seem extreme. Yeah. It's a, it's a heavy burn. I don't, I don't know. It's an albatross. <laughs> yeah, okay. When they wake up in a military hospital, the doctors won't tell them what happened, where they are, or how they've been miraculously healed. Things become even stranger when Reese returns home. San Francisco feels like a different place with police enforcing curfew, hazmat teams collecting dead birds, and a strange presence that seems to be following her. When Reese unexpectedly collides with the beautiful Amber Gray, her search for the truth is forced into an entirely new direction and threatens to expose a vast global conspiracy that the government has worked for decades to keep secret. So I'm just going to say what my brain immediately thinks about this. Have you heard the meme that's like all birds have been replaced and they are just spies? Yes. That's where I think. <laughs> I have heard of that meme. Yes. Yeah. yeah global conspiracy. Uh, it seems like lots of people are into those. Mm hmm. Very Sometimes, funny. You know, this to their good. detriment. Um, but this is a fun, a fun global conspiracy. Sounds like a real thriller. Uh, suspense. Yeah, I got to figure out where the mystery is going in it. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's a two book one. And it came out a while ago. So they're both they're both out available. You could read them right. Today. No waiting. <laughs> OK, so our next one um, is called Rosewater. And this one is, I believe, a trilogy. And I want to say that maybe the third book is out as well already, but I, it could just be the first two. Um, anyway, this book is by Tate Thompson, um, and this first book, Rosewater, it's the start of an award-winning cutting-edge trilogy set in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Rosewater is a town on the edge, a community formed around the edges, <laughs> literally edges. I feel like whoever <laughs> wrote this maybe should have, you don't want to edge and then edge again, yep. not to be so critical of the poor <laughs> people who are writing all the blurbs for these books anyway so constant in our series <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> okay rosewater is a town on the edge a community formed around the edges of a mysterious alien biodome its residents comprise the hopeful the hungry and the helpless people eager for a glimpse inside the dome or a taste of its rumored healing powers Caro is a government agent with a criminal past. He has seen inside the biodome and doesn't care to again. But when something starts killing off others like himself, Caro must defy his masters to search for an answer, facing his dark history and coming to a realization about a horrifying future. So as we said, um, you know, with Armada gave lots of detail and this one gives almost no detail. Mm -hmm. So two different ways to get you hooked into a book. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So not a lot. Um, you know, you don't don't know necessarily what's going on there, but don't you kind of want to find out? Mm -hmm. Alien biodomes. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's an alien inv invasion because it's on this episode. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so that's another one. And 
seems very, um, very well regarded, very award winning literary title. So mm. if that's your bag, check Go it out. Check it out. <laughs> okay, I think this is our last um, highlight and then we get into our recs. So this is, oh wait, no, you just did Rosewater, right? I did do Rosewater. <gasps> so we're into our recs, but first things first, we want to mention we have done another book about alien invasions, which was, I think, Yes. Uh, yeah, Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. Yes. Um, and I'll also say it, we also did one by Gordon Corman called Nose Pickers from Outer Space. A classic. <laughs> we did. <laughs> there might be more to you, honestly. I didn't dig through the list too long, but I might take a look. I might take another look. And if there's other ones, then I'll throw them on the, yeah. on the show notes. Yeah. yeah, just go look at all of our old episodes. <laughs> just listen to them all. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Okay, so here is the uh, my rec. So it's Lagoon by Nettie Okafor. Um, and interestingly enough, I know Rosewater was by a Nigerian author. This is by a Nigerian American author. So it also takes place in um, <clears throat> Nigeria, but not on the edge. <laughs> We didn't even plan it. It just happened this way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I love the cover of this one. It's much better than the actual cover that I had, which was more like realistic. Um, okay. When a massive object crashes into the ocean off the coast of Lagos, it, uh, Nigeria's most populous and legendary city, three people wandering along Beach Bar Beach, Adora, the marine biologist anthony the rapper famous throughout africa and agu the troubled soldier they find themselves running a, a race against time to save the country they love from the world itself no save the country they love and the world itself from itself so it's it's really cool basically it's told from like multiple perspectives so each time like a big thing happens you're seeing it from different angles which not I'm usually not into that, but I liked being able to see kind of what's going on everywhere because it was uh, it's when it's like a world catastrophe event, kind of like World War Z. Sure. Yeah. When you get to see it from everywhere, because sometimes it's like my name's Katniss and I live in fake America. What <laughs> happened to the rest of the world? We don't know. It's a good point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, basically the there's like this sonic boom at nighttime from the water and these three people are kind of chosen sort of by this incoming alien people and um, who have the ability to magically heal they have the ability to like change form and you see they want to be peaceful they think that people are good and you kind of watch them as they're learning that maybe humans aren't good uh. yeah there's like a turning <laughs> point where, where it's like could go either way so it's um it's really good i like that i, I like that that i didn't know which way it was going because it, be, it felt very real. Like if you meet some people, you're going to be like, <laughs> other people are going to be like, wow. <laughs> so I would, I would check it out. I'm usually not a sci-fi reader, but it was, it uh, piqued my interest. That's very true. So high praise. If mm -hmm. you're not usually a sci-fi person, if you're more of a, a fantasy person, which is, which is where Nicole usually goes, yeah. this might be one that would work for you. Yeah, it was very good. And you made me just change my rec actually, because I thought of a, <laughs> I thought of a different book. I'm just going to, I'll shout this one out really briefly and then I'll do sure. the other one briefly too. So the one that I had listed originally has a great title. <laughs> it's called <laughs> The Prom Goers Interstellar Excursion by Chris McCoy. Um, yeah, just a few days before prom, Bennett pulls off something he never imagined possible. His dream girl, Sophie, agrees to be his date. Moments afterwards, however, he watches Sophie get abducted by aliens in the middle of the New Mexico desert. Faced with a dateless prom and likely kidnapping charges, Bennett does the only thing he can think of. He catches a ride into outer space with a band of extraterrestrial musicians to bring her back. Why not? <laughs> that sounds so cute. <laughs> and I, I read this one a long time ago, and I don't remember it very well, but I did give it four to five stars, which is not usual for me most things are three I did give it four wow. and I had yeah and I had it marked as um funny sarcastic and romantic so <laughs> could be a fun ride um yeah and then the other one that it made me that Nicole talking made me think of and I had meant to add it to this list and I forgot 
Um, I'm gonna just look it up. It's it's by okay. We are the ants by Sean David Hutchinson, mm. and he is a YA author who's done some very realistic stuff, and then he's done more sci-fi stuff. I, I read a book of his first that just like made me weep. Oh my gosh, oh. it was like so it was an intense emotional experience. But then I was like, I'm into this guy. So this book um, I read and really enjoyed as well. So it's called, we are the, we are the ants. And it's, it's uh, kind of like, you know, how we think of ourselves as being so above. And then in this instance, we are the ants because the aliens have come in and they're, we're so tiny and insignificant to them. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So Henry Denton has spent years being periodically abducted by aliens. And then the aliens give him an ultimatum. The world will end in 144 days. And all Henry has to do to stop it is push a big red button. Only he isn't sure he wants to. After all, <laughs> life hasn't been great for Henry. His mother is a struggling waitress held together by a thin layer of cigarette smoke. His brother is a jobless drop, drop out who just knocked someone up. His grandmother is slowly losing herself to Alzheimer's. And Henry is still dealing with the grief of his boyfriend's suicide last year. Wiping the slate clean sounds like a pretty good choice to him. But Henry is a scientist first, and facing the question thoroughly and logically, he begins to look for pros and cons. In the bully who is his perpetual one-night stand, in the best friend who betrayed him, in the brilliant and mysterious boy who walked into the wrong class. Weighing the pain and joy that surrounds him, Henry is left with the ultimate choice. Push the button and save the planet and everyone on it, or let the world and his pain be destroyed forever. Wow, that's heavy. It's really heavy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's intense. It's intense. Like it's obviously about dealing with with grief and, um, you know, different mental illness. Um, there's big life the, things, big life things, the the main character is gay. Um, yeah, it's just it's really good. Really, it sounds thoughtful. really good. Mm -hmm. it sounds really good. I will say, though, his name when you said Henry Denton, I immediately thought Harvey Dent. <laughs> um from batman for those of you that don't know and i was like interesting name choice <laughs> yes no it is not in fact um two face from the batman series it's a different <laughs> it's a different conflicted young man it's a completely different name <laughs> yeah yes yeah. yeah so i had to sneak that one in as a secondary wreck because i forgot to add it to the list and it really is great it's, it's funny sometimes we'll do a list and then the next day i'm like oh, i just found a really good one for it <laughs> that's the pros of doing the same list twice sometimes <laughs> yes yes it's true yeah uh do we have anything else to add or can I, we wrap up i think we can wrap up Okay, well then thank you everybody for listening or watching whatever you're doing. Uh, we post our videos on Tuesday, or no, our audio on Tuesdays on any <laughs> podcast platform and then our video the following Monday on YouTube. Uh, so you can find us, read this next on either wherever you're going. Um, and if you missed a title or missed an author's name, we always post our things to the blog, which is tbplofftheshelf.com. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just look there. We also have Goodreads, so add us as a friend. And please give us a five-star rating if you really like us, because it helps people <laughs> find us everywhere. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> and join us next week. We're thinking we might do um, a historical fiction episode. Mix it up. Yeah. yeah. All right. We will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.